Breeding in Ark Survival Evolved can be a complex and hard to grasp. At first, there's lots of nuances for making ever more powerful creatures, and scaling up this process is something that the complete crew has had to do. Today, I'm going to go over the basics using these otters. If you remember, myself, Romeo and Vex caught this 150 otter. It has 36 points in melee damage, 29 in weight, 30 in health, and we wanted to get all of the stats that we wanted to keep from this creature onto another one. I've got this rubbish boy here. It's just called I'm a boy. It's got no stats that we want to keep. We just want the stats from the female and we don't really want any of the stats from the male. Now, that being said, stamina and oxygen is absolutely useless to the otter. So I did carry them stats across into a perfect male and a perfect female. Now, these otters have got no mutations on them at all. We've got the male here and I've got at least 20 females up on the ceiling. And I'll show you how I get them up there a little bit later on. But they all have the stats we want with no mutations. We stick the male on top of the roof and breed until we get a mutation that we want. Here we go. We've got 38 points in melee damage. So we got two points and two levels into our melee damage here. And we're going to stack melee and weight mutations. Here's another mutation, a 162 and a 164 that's now got 42 points in melee damage. Very important for an otter for the hypo and hyper insulation as a shoulder pet. This one I've currently got on the roof also got a weight mutation. So we're going to continue to roll and stack our mutations. And that's the process of breeding. Now, a lot of breeders will just stack one line of creatures. So we could have gone entirely melee mutations on these creatures here and stacked it up 20 times. But I'm not really going for anything perfect. We want something really good and serverable, not overpowered. Okay, I noticed a couple of colours there. We've got a couple of green otters and they've got 168. So they've definitely got a mutation on the father's side, which is what we want to want to keep. I say the father because it would 168 is the number we're looking for. And you can obviously see there's a colour. It's got a oxygen mutation, so it's no good, but I'm going to give it some food just in case I want to keep that. As you can see here, we've got four points in oxygen. These ones only have two, so it's not a stat we want to keep, but I'll feed it just in case somebody wants to keep the colour at the end. And I can't see any more 168s. I'm sure a few of you are going to be like, oh, the poor otters in the comments, but it's necessary. We've got to do this to get the perfect otter. <laughs> so just looking for 168. And is that one just there? Looks like it hasn't actually got a color mutation. Well, it might have a color mutation. It's just that it not, didn't land on one of the regions that gives color. We'll check in a second because the awesome spyglass also shows you that. Really, really great mod. One of the only two mods. We've only got that and the stack mod on the server. So if you're doing this without that mod, you just have to work it out. So. There we go. It's actually rolled cyan 59 on a region that doesn't show. And it appears to have a weight mutation. It is a female, which means we're going to have to go through an extra step. Just check if I can find any males. So I've allowed this female to grow up. I'm still waiting for another mutation just in case we get one on a male. But we're allowing this one to grow up and we've bred it back with the perfect male. Now this is important. We always have to breed a mutated creature with an unmutated one. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a, a load of stacks that you don't want. This one, of course, is no good because it's got the female's stats. We've got the mutations that we actually want on this creature. But, of course, it's a female. And I want to get a male back on the top of that roof. Okay, so this one's also a female. Unfortunately, no good. So we managed to get another male with a mutation on the melee side. So we want to keep that. Let it grow up and put that one on the roof. That saves us having to get the female's stats onto a male over there with the weight. Building a specific area dedicated to breeding helps immensely when doing this process. Placing the females in even lines upon a temporary ceiling 
and having the mutated male above ensures it can reach all of the females and the rates that you get your mutations will increase based upon the amount of females you have. With egg laying creatures you'll need air conditioning units underneath so they drop into a state of incubation upon being laid unless of course your map features the incubation chamber. If you happen to use this method yourself don't forget to switch off ignore group whistles, switch all creatures to passive, disallow harvesting and we also turn off the creature head movement. Doing this will of course mean that all creatures stay in position once placed. So let's have a brief recap on where we are with the otters and perhaps I can help where many of the new breeders will go wrong when it comes to stacking mutations. So as you'll recall we've got this female here, she got a weight mutation. I simply wanted to carry all of them stats across into a male. Now where many people will go wrong is they would get the mutated creature here and breed it back with the mutated creature on the roof. And if we did that and put this female with that male on the roof, what we would end up doing is doubling the mutations. So this one has got five random mutations. The one on the roof here also has five random mutations, four melee, one weight. And if we put them together, all of their offspring would have 10 mutations. But we would have used up five of our slots to do that. So it really would have been a complete waste. And that's where a lot of people can go wrong. Bearing in mind that you can only stack up to 20 mutations on the mother's and father's side. And of course, once you get to 20 mutations, it gets a little bit harder because then you've got to carry on doing it with the females. But that's another story and that really would be going into overkill when it comes to dino mutation stacking. And like I say, if you're really going to go for a perfect one, then you would stack all of the weight mutations separately, all of the melee mutations separately, and combine all of them stats at the last minute. So this is the teleporter. We've just set up all of the breeding areas up above the sanctuary, and they're relatively safe and uninterrupted up here. This is the Velonosaur breeding paddock, and oh my god, what's going on with this? One of the event colours here, I'm sorry. Um, it's actually got 41 points in weight, which would have been handy if we'd have got that one before but I've combined all of the best stats that we've got and just currently stacking mutations on the Velonosaurs. Really looking forward to taking these guys out for a spin. Just a bit of a fun project this one but currently free stamina and one melee mutation in on those. Just across here we've got our tech farm. Largely set up as a farm but granted these tech rexes would probably be good enough to do any of the island bosses here. We're not actually going to be really breeding the Rexes. It's just largely set up to get element dust and scrap metal and just used, utilised as a tech farm. Always handy to use some creatures for that and hey, you never know, you might stack a few Rex mutations. When it comes to Giga breeding though, you need a lot of space. You have to have a lot of time and patience because it takes a long time to lay these eggs. These are the longest creatures you're gonna to have to wait for in the game to hatch eggs. They're sat there with the Tuso and incubating, hatching and breeding gigas takes a long, long time. So the crew managed to come across a level 130. And here I would like to actually make a point when many people ask me, is this gonna be worth taming? Is this any good? Well, this particular 130 giga when it was wild, only had 17 points in melee damage. So essentially, it wasn't going to be very good. In fact, I've tamed gigas and various creatures with <laughs> less than 17 or more than 17 points in rather and uh, come out with less than we got on here because in the end, it actually tamed out with 32 points in melee damage. So we combined all of the stats with our base male here and melee is the only thing we're going to be stacking on gigas and we're going to need a lot of it and it's going to be unlikely that we come across a better version than this you know many people will say where do you start well 30 points i would say in any stat 30 wild points is a good starting point for any creature if you're getting into the 40s and the mid 40s you're looking extremely good really rare and if you're getting into the 50 or higher 50 wild points or higher in one of your base creatures then you really have found a diamond in the rough so for the purposes of this 
We're going to roll with 32 points in melee damage to begin with. And we're going to have to stack quite a lot of mutations on top of that to make these boss fairing dinos. So Janice, thank you very much for the support on Patreon. I'm naming you after our new otter. Of course, we're going to keep rolling for them giga mutations and keep building our boss fairing dinos. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.